What you're going to see are the designs and pictures and stories that music inspired in the minds and imaginations of a group of artists. The innate desire of storytelling imbued within us is an impulse almost as old as humanity itself. There's an intrinsic passion for us to interpret and communicate our reality as we perceive it. And it just so happens that the way we're most comfortable is through the fictionalized projections of our own lives through the agency of art. These means of expression have morphed and evolved over centuries. However, their one consistent feature is the attempt to elucidate our existence and no matter if realistic or conceptual, the longing for storytelling has been ever present. Art's history has always been in tandem to the journey of the human condition, and whether writing, sculpting, painting, these various styles do not oppose one another. Each branch forms an illustrious tree, whose branches grow larger with greater understanding, revealing themselves so more of the world can see its splendor. Every branch is unique, necessary to offer what the others don't have. And with all its extravagance and unsurpassable passion, the world of opera is no exception. <laughs> Unfortunately, modern perceptions of opera are often misunderstood perhaps due to the medium's proclivity to respect its historical foundations. Adversely, being the form most familiar to us, film happens to be in the advantageous position of being more accessible than opera. But why? Perhaps cinema's mimetic nature allows for a greater degree of verisimilitude. Its closeness to reality helps us recognise our own tribulations in the work that we witness. Simply put, it resembles our reality better than anything else. Yet opera expresses itself through more visceral methods. Opposing a more matter-of-fact approach, opera spews its emotion from a very primal, instinctive place, finding a blend of expression through both performance and music, the most abstract of all art forms. Why the most abstract? Because music, with no context, no direct connection with ourselves, or even any formal understanding of the art, can still hold a hereditary power to resonate in each of us. Opera takes this notion and applies a more conceptual format to music. Entire narratives and emotions are relayed through this unique and abstract lens. There is perhaps no greater example than opera to display that expression and abstraction walk hand in hand. Opera's disassociation with reality is its greatest attribute. And if film is more of a reflection of reality, then opera is a refraction of reality. Only opera can do this. In a play, if more than one person speaks at the same time, it's just noise. No one can understand a word, but with opera, with music, with music, you can have 20 individuals all talking at the same time, and it's not noise, it's a perfect harmony. To compare opera to film is to highlight the natural, unavoidable differences to the varying forms. Film almost incorporates all other elements of all other art forms, but that doesn't mean that it can do everything. So why does film borrow from opera so often? It's to appropriate the elements that are unique to opera that can't be replicated through the methods exclusive to film. The techniques of opera allow for pure emotion to be thrust outwards and still be comprehended by all. Andy? I have no idea to this day what those two Italian ladies were singing about. The truth is, I don't want to know. Some things are best left unsaid. Film can have this instantaneous reaction, yet the mere sound of opera can transfix us. Frighten us. Or fulfill the dreams we thought were unreachable. This is why opera is directly referenced in cinema. Its connotations of grand emotion help emphasize the already existing emotions we see. Opera tends to have this ability of making everything feel larger. And beyond just the use of music, 
Even the setting of an opera will give a scene an added drama. The idea of a scene taking place at the grandest stage we can imagine, coordinated to orchestral music, surrounded by sheer spectacle, will undoubtedly emphasise the emotion within a scene. An action set piece can become fuelled by an orchestral intensity. Or the simple look of a subject whose thoughts are consuming her can be enhanced by the music brewing beneath. Though already a pre-existing context to the music, it's reapplied with a new context, yet its original emotion still remains. The magic of opera lies in its grandiose and historical connotations. We juxtapose modern sensibilities with an age-old art form, but we simultaneously see just how much they synchronise with one another. It offers a subconscious realisation of a universal emotional connection that's existed through the ages, and its natural implementation to cinema shows that it's as relevant now as it ever was. Opera demonstrates the shared internal journey that humanity ventures, a journey that will be with us always. Although it may be from a time almost unrecognisable in our modern society, the feelings and the passion dwelling within it will stay for eternity. Cinema's direct parallels with opera show even further how adaptable the art form is, even today. Songs of seducing women match precisely what we see on screen. Or alternatively, the cries of sorrow mimicking a tragedy we're helpless in preventing. If there was but one way I could substantiate the importance of opera, it's that opera very rarely tries to be cinematic, but cinema will very often try to be operatic. Cannibal. Summoning on the medium's techniques to punctuate a moment that isn't to be explained, but to manifest pure, unfiltered, raw emotion. And there's no way more universally understandable than through opera. <coughs> Although on the surface appearing radically different, film and opera share many parallels with one another. Obviously at the core, they're both forms of expression through some manner of narrative, yet even in its basic structure. Instead of screenplays, there's a libretto, and rather than set pieces, opera's most memorable moments are punctuated with arias. And a movie's opening credits is essentially the cinematic equivalent of the overture. In this sense, I think it shows that, simply because opera's alternative to storytelling is a more impressionistic approach, it shouldn't be regarded as esoteric. As we've seen, its similarities with film are plentiful. You don't have to understand painting to feel the emotion conveyed through the art, and so you don't have to be a musician to feel the emotion of music. <laughs> The willingness to accept the illusion of film will always be greater than that of opera. Yet with film, the form's rules still had to be subtly instilled within us. We accept the illusion of editing. The ability to switch perspectives through time and space in the fraction of a second is something we no longer question. The audience understands that this is the illusion of film. The illusion of opera is that subjects' narrative are told through a musical prose. Truthfully, the suspension of disbelief is equal. As we traverse various art forms, we must accept the methodology that makes each an individual form of aesthetic poetry. Opera can take a lifetime to master, but it requires only an open mind to appreciate. Those moments that can provide a film its identity, that's opera. 
It's not as inaccessible as we may think. It's ingrained in our minds, and although you may not know it, you know more than you think you do. We've all heard pieces of music that alter us at our very core. That's the purpose of opera. A complete liberation of feelings expressed through a unique form of storytelling. For every piece of a Mozart, a Handel, a Puccini, one must remember that these were masters whose nuanced and dexterous ear allowed them to create masterpieces of storytelling that moved us. And once this simple understanding has been made, you can feel that delicate fire inside through their music. Opera never was entertainment for the elite. It was and still is a profound and passionate art for everyone. <laughs>